Hi friends. Welcome to the Whitman Room. We're here at First Presbyterian Church of Asheville with a gift for you. Today we're going to take a tour through our art gallery. The show that's hanging is called Art Across the Generations. We're featuring student artwork from a continuing education class entitled Nature's Notebook and from students in the fine arts program who are um, pursuing a degree. The mission statement for this gallery is to inspire and honor, to encourage and celebrate the unique creative spirit of the visual arts. Over the years, John and Carol of Brewink have curated over 30 shows since 2015. The gallery started with a showering of stoles. And over the years, artists from the River Arts District to the federal penitentiaries have had their artwork in our gallery. There's been artwork from the um, this lynching museum. There's been artwork from veterans. And most recently, portraitures of our homeless neighbors who visit our Saturday sanctuary. So, you ready? Let's go take a look at the artwork. Okay, so these are the first two pieces in our show. These are monotypes, and the first one at the top is entitled Pop, and the lower one is entitled Red Blade. They're both one of a kind, and the artist is Lisa June Ames. A monotype is a type of etching. Um, it's it's re relatively light, and when Lisa um, did these works, the colors that she added um, were only added once. So these are, these are unique pieces. So this next piece is a barred owl. It's a piece of work that's done by Cindy Schlesinger. And she used a technique that's a dry point etching. This technique makes for a softer line. And in order to create depth of field, Cindy used a process that's called cross-hatching, where lines are drawn one way, and then across another way, and then across another way, and that gives the depth. So there's a lot of beautiful detail in this piece. She did a nice job. Untitled 37 is the name of this next piece. It's a piece of art that was designed and constructed by Rich Dan. It's a pen and ink on toned paper and he accomplished a great deal of detail in his work. It's very effective. Nice. If you've ever walked beneath a magnolia tree, you may have seen the beautiful clusters of magnolia um, seed pods that form after the blossoms are gone. This next piece is entitled Magnolia Seed Pod. It's a piece by Lisa Dillon and she used a micro pen, which is a very fine ink pen, and then colored pencil for her highlights. She did a beautiful job. Now we come to some of the artwork of Peter Lower. He was generous enough to submit some of his pieces. And as the instructor, um, that's rather unique. This piece is called an aging datura. A datura is a Moonflower. Um, it is interesting that he has chosen to to sketch it in its um, in its state of age and wisdom. We'll say that. Um, and to quote Joyce, um, here's what she writes about Peter. 
We have a treasure in our instructor. If you check our North Carolina Cardinal Library, more than three dozen books come up that Peter either illustrated or wrote as well as illustrated. His talents include wonderful writing as well as art. One book, The Wild Gardener, was selected as one of the 75 great garden books of the 20th century by the American Horticulture Society and was the winner of the Garden Writers American Art of Communication Award. And you can see why I'm reading this. His talented wife, Jean, who, I looked this up, he married on his 25th birthday, also collaborates on some of his books. Peter's newly published book is called Container and Fragrant, Fragrant Gardens and he published that in February 2020. We're lucky to have him among us. This next piece entitled Red Poppies has an interesting subtitle. It's called Alla Miss Delaney and Peter Lower. So I had to ask Joyce, now what does that mean? And she said that Peter has um, followed Miss Delaney's work a 17th century English artist who did paper cut and decoupage. So this piece is done in that same, that same vein and, and it's absolutely beautiful. So it's a, a nod to Peter and to Miss Delaney. The artist is Yvonne Farnell. We're very fortunate to have not one but two of Peter Lower's pieces in the show. This next piece is called Fantastic Plant Forms. And again, it's a pen and ink sketch. Peter's classes are pretty phenomenal. I had the good fortune years ago to take a few in the series. And one thing I remember in particular about Peter, I was in his class and I had just sketched what I felt was a really beautiful um, geranium blossom. And Peter came over and he looked at my work and he just paused and I looked at him and he said one word. He said, persist. And it's amazing what that's done for me over the years. A little encouragement goes a long way. Linda Kuiker did this next piece and it's entitled Gourds and it's a collage piece um, and Linda has submitted an artist statement, so I'll share that with you. I started painting well into my adult years, beginning with watercolor when I lived in Flagstaff, Arizona, in a community schools class. I was lucky that my instructor organized a group of us to go to Ghost Ranch for a week of painting. We went several times. That reminds me of um, women's studies. We had a presentation a few years ago about Ghost Ranch, so it's kind of nice. Um, that was out at Deerfields. Um, and Linda goes on to say that Peter is an inspiring instructor, as are the other students. In class, she has tried colored pencil, collage, along with continuing with her watercolors and she especially enjoys creating collage paintings out of magazine. If you look at this one closely, that's what she's done. Now this next piece is one of my own, and it's a watercolor from a class I took back in 1998 over at AB Tech in the art department with my now program chair, Sharon Tramel. My youngest daughter named this piece Comfort at Midnight. And I asked her, I said, sweetie, why'd you call it that? And she said, well, mom, when I would see that pic picture, that painting at nighttime, it just gave me such great comfort. So I thought, okay, we'll just go with that. Okay, now fast forward 22 years, and I finished this painting just a few months ago. It's an oil painting, and it was a commission for Bill Lowry 
and Alice Peterson. So this piece is actually sold. While I was painting it, a classmate came into the studio and said, oh, is that Antelope Canyon? And I was like, yes, very good. Um, so between this painting and this painting, um, I spent time as a forest ranger, a firefighter, a newborn nurse, a um, medical technology specialist, and well, and most importantly, a mother. And my artist statement is that I feel very fortunate now to be studying fine arts at AB Tech. It's a dream realized, and I feel like my gifts are directly from God, a way to express my gratitude. This next piece is called Still Life in Glass. It is done by artist Christopher Clark DeWild. And believe it or not, this is Christopher's very first still life drawing. He did it for a class at AB Tech. I was able to have the good fortune to watch him working in the studio when he was, when he was doing this. Christopher, um, in his artist statement, says that after working 15 years as a chef, he's now a student in the fine art department. He studied at Cordon Bleu in Chicago, Illinois, but struggled with the demands of full-time restaurant work. A longtime resident of the Asheville area, Christopher's now focusing his talents in the world of fine arts. Primarily a digital artist, drawing is a new realm for him, and this piece is one of his first still life drawings. He finished it February 22nd, 2020. This next piece is entitled Snap. It's by artist Prabhat Moore. Prabhat is also a classmate of mine. And when I asked him about this piece, I said, what, what does it mean? And he's, he didn't really give me an answer. He said, it's just about self-reflection. He's a very thoughtful young artist. Um, he's in his first semester at AB Tech. And I recall the very first class I had with Prabhat, it was a two-dimensional design class, and he was on the desk, at the desk next to me. And when I saw the work he was producing, I knew that I was in the presence of a very talented young artist. Prabhat Moore named this piece sfumato. It's an Italian term from the Renaissance that describes a, a smoky type of atmospheric um, effect that it, the artist uses. Um, Prabhat used, um, let's see, pastels and colored pencils in this piece. And then came in with some abstract line. It's just a beautiful piece. He did this one when he was back in high school but I thought it would be nice to include it in our AB Tech show. This piece is interestingly named Between the Lines. This was a class assignment that we all go through in our introductory drawing classes. You draw your own hand. It can be rather challenging. Um, I think it's nice how Prabhat kind of put this all into a, a circular shape. Um, I bought this piece from him <laughs> in class. I was like, can I, can I buy that? And he's like, you really want to? And so, yeah, this is in my private collection. Watercolor is perhaps one of the most challenging mediums for beginning artists. Uh, this next piece is a watercolor by Bob Smedley. And Bob painted Beaver Lake. Another challenging medium is charcoal. You have to be really careful when you work in charcoals to not smear and smudge. This next piece is entitled Monday. And I can attest that that's what he looked like a lot of times on Monday morning. Um, here's Prabhat's artist statement. Asheville-based art student Prabhat Moore has been laying the foundation for his artistic breadth since 2014. 
experimenting in fields of portraiture, still life, and abstract, has progressed his mark-making in various media. His passion for pulling out light and darkness from his subjects drives him toward a style of expressive lines and forms. Jules Bradshaw is the creator of this next piece, which is entitled Red Bud. Jules did this piece in 2018, and she used graphite and colored pencil. She included a quote of her own, which I think speaks volumes. If you draw even one plant, you will forever, will forever look at them with a different eye. And that's so true. You know, in this time of staying at home and looking for creative outlets, I would encourage you to go out in your backyard and get a piece of paper and pencil and just look at a plant and, and draw it. And you'll become very intimate with that plant. And Jules is right, you'll never see it again the same way. This is a watercolor that I painted um, this past year. It's called the Angel Wing Begonia. If you were at the church retreat, I showed it during the talent show <laughs> and got a great reception, so thank you. Um, this particular plant I found in the conservatory at the Biltmore Estate. And um, I have decided to follow in the footsteps of Ann Basilic and not sell my originals, but I do sell prints and cards. It was a joy, I can say, to share this with you guys then, and it's also a pleasure to share it now. This next piece is by Joyce Young. She is the co-curator of this show and brought in all the students from Peter's uh, Nature's Notebook class. This piece is entitled Peony, and it's a pen and ink, and it has beautiful detail. Here's Joyce's artist statement. After over 10 years of encouraging me to do some art, my husband Tom finally convinced me to take an art class. Nature's Notebook, continuing education class with H. Peter Lower, instructor, is perfect for me. It's only one morning a week, and there is some structure, but a lot of freedom too. We've dabbled in collage, alcohol ink, bamboo pens, monograms, gel prints, cross-hatching techniques, stippling, which is like making little tiny dots, monotypes, dendritic art, oil pastels, sienna prints, mandalas, contour drawing, just to mention a few. We get a brief art history lesson with PowerPoint images most every week. We're free to work on art projects of our own choosing, although there are suggested projects. Good work, Joyce. Sunflowers. We all love sunflowers. This is a ink and watercolor piece and it's done by Elizabeth Simmons. And akin to Peter's aging datura, this the sunflower has been out in the sun a little while. It's a beautiful piece. Oftentimes watercolor and ink together, primo. Bridget Knopf has two pieces in our show. The first is Camellia. And the second is Lily, and both of these are, are done in pen. Bridget has generously offered to donate the sale of these works uh, to First Presbyterian. We all know and love Fran Ogasawada, and this is her work, a camellia, and it's done in colored pencil. Here's what Fran has to say. Learning to observe and draw the details of a flower takes patience as well as skill. 
It is an activity that is enjoyable and rewarding. We have another monotype here. The title is Trailing. And this is a piece by Angela Matulewski. Beautifully rendered. Ali Larkin entitled this piece Lark. This was an assignment in a painting class at AB Tech. Here's her artist statement. Ali is an enthusiastic chemist enrolled in art history and studio art classes in the pursuit of knowledge relating to the field of art conservation. Making art for her is about the process of creation and the ritualistic aspects. She finds comfort in the grounding nature of pottery and printmaking, but loves exploring new mediums. She hopes to continue creating as long as she is able. She ultimately views art as a way to connect with others and cherishes being capable of creating and experiencing works of art. Allie was a, a real joy to have in the studio. So I'm glad she, she came back and, and brought a piece of artwork even though she's gone on to UNCA. But this is, uh, this is her self-portrait. Over the past two years working as a studio assistant at AB Tech in the Fine Arts Studio, I noticed that there was lots of artwork that students left behind. Ryan left this picture, and it's so well done that I thought I would just include it in our show. This piece is an assignment that was in a painting class at AB Tech on achieving texture in a painting. Um, this one is entitled Cliffs of Dover. You may recognize that title from a guitar song um, by Eric Johnson. Snowy Day by Dorothy Smith is a beautiful work in colored pencil. The microscopic detail in this piece is worth noting. She did a beautiful job. Just beautiful. This piece is entitled Out of the Woods. It's by Patricia Cotterell. She's a local prolific artist. Um, Patricia is originally from Scotland and studied graphic arts at the Lincoln College of Art in London. She currently has a studio in the River Arts District and her work can be found um, at Mountain Nest Gallery in Black Mountain. She's a member of the Valley Fine Arts League her work can also be found at First Presbyterian Church in Asheville, North Carolina on Church Street. Okay, so that wraps up our gallery show for our shelter in place. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and on the website will be a link if you're interested in purchasing any of the art. You'll be doing that directly from the artist. Um, I'd like to say a a heartfelt thank you to John and Carol for all the work they've done over the years. Um, it's been an honor to, to help hang a few shows with them. The installation is a great fun time. Um, thanks to Joyce and Tom and all the artists who over the years have brought their artwork into our church home. Um, looking forward uh, students who are interested in any of these programs can sign up. A lot of the classes will be online. And for you high school seniors and young people, if you're considering a gap year until things calm down, AB Tech is a great way to go. There's a transfer program and all your credits can go right towards college. So just keep that in mind. Um, I guess that's all for today. We have one more offering, and that is watch this space in the future because our next venture is going to be a virtual art show with members' art. So stay tuned.
Thank you and God bless you.